This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Systemic game design is a hot topic in game development. There are many videos and articles that talk about systemic games, or that discuss the benefits of infusing systems into your game. But no one talks about building a good system, or defines exactly what makes a game systemic. And part of that seems to be because there isn't an adequate definition of systems, or at least not a definition that isn't broad or overreaching or overly vague. But to understand systemic games, it is critical to understand what systems are and how they relate to games. So how do we define a system? The best answer I've been able to come up with is that a system is a combination of multiple mechanics or other simpler systems that take in inputs, conditions, and result in an output, effects. For the purposes of this discussion and series, the term mechanic is essentially interchangeable with system, but typically refers to a more basic system that is part of a larger system. This sounds generic, and it is. It can range from player input systems, where the input is a button press and the output is character action, to economies, where inputs are supply, demand, and other considerations, and the output is a value placed on an item, to an entire game, where the input is the player actions and the game code, and the output is success or failure. While it's a vague definition, it does give us a few things to look for. A system is comprised of three elements. Inputs, one or more conditions that exist in the game world, Evaluation, behaviors that analyze these inputs and choose an action to take, and output, changing conditions based on this evaluation. The more I tried to find a concrete definition for systems, the more I realized it has to be at least a little generic. One reason for this is that all games use systems. Some systems, in fact, are common to many games. Here are a few very common systems in games. Gravity, for instance. The input is looking at what is under the character. Is it ground, air, water, etc.? Also, is the character flying or defying gravity somehow? After evaluating these conditions, the output is to adjust the character's vertical velocity, either making them fall downward or stay where they are if they are on top of a solid surface. A health system usually takes in an input of some sort of change to a health variable, whether that's an integer or a float, and this could be increasing or decreasing the character's health. And ultimately, this leads to an output of updating a health UI, whether that's in the player's HUD or perhaps a bar over a particular enemy, and potentially ending either the game or killing off a unit if that health gets below zero. Another common system is combat, where inputs will be things like collisions, if there's an attack value, weaknesses or defenses. The output then being reducing the health of a unit and possibly killing that unit. These last two examples represent another element of systems that makes them even more difficult to define. Systems can be made up of other systems. Mike Sellers, who literally wrote the book on game systems, discusses this topic in a number of his own talks. A combat system may use health and collision, and maybe some sort of weakness immunity system. Or a physics system might use gravity and collision systems, among others. As something that can be described as a collection of itself, the meta-nature of systems makes a strict definition even harder to pin down. But these common examples also give rise to another question. If all games use systems, why aren't all games considered systemic games? This is the real question, and probably the more important question from a game design standpoint. Now that we have at least a rudimentary definition of a system, we can begin to delve into what systems do, and why some games are defined by their systems and others aren't. But we'll leave that to future videos. Hopefully this has given you something to think about. If you'd like to weigh in, feel free to do so in the comments. You can also find out when future videos are released by subscribing below. And in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.